Hey there, welcome back. This is Professor Hank, and in this video, I'm going to discuss, or we're going to take a look at, a pointer based doubly linked list. Okay, doubly linked list is very similar to a regular old singly linked list, but its node is going to have two pointers, right? So it's going to have two pointers in its node. And the pointers that we're going to have, we're going to have a next pointer and we're going to have a prev pointer okay so what this allows us to do is it allows us in this linked list to be able to traverse in two directions just in the same way relative with relative ease right so what we're going to need to make this happen is we're going to have ourselves a head pointer which is going to point to the first node and then that first node, that head node, is going to point to the node after it. And then that node is going to point to the node after it. And then finally, the last node points to null, just like any other singularly linked list. Now, what makes this different, though, is that we're going to add a tail pointer, which is going to point to the last node in the list. And then that last node is going to point to the node that came before it. And then the node that came before it is going to point to the node that came before it until you get back to the head node which is pointing to null okay so this is going to allow us to have easy traversal in two directions right the algorithm for going backwards is going to be just logically the reverse of going forwards right so this is a great data structure um, if you need to be able to go in two different directions so some examples of using a doubly linked list, you could think about, um, you know, web browsers, right? If you got a web browser that has forward buttons and back buttons, right? Could be the case that maybe each one of these nodes has got a URL inside of it. Okay, and if you want to go backwards to previous pages, well then, you know, you hit that back button and you go back from node to node to node, right? Each node is storing a URL, but then when you're ready to go back to the page you were, you were previously at, well, then you gotta do that, hit that forward button, be able to go back, okay? All right, or maybe you could think about a um, music list, right? An MP3 player or something like that. Fast forwarding songs or going hitting the back button to go back to previous songs that you liked. Okay, so let's define an interface for this thing. Okay, just like any other data structure, we're going to need ways to get something into the data structure. So we'll look at an insert algorithm. We will look at an append algorithm. Okay, we'll look for a search algorithm, which I'll call find. And then we will look at an algorithm for destroying the list. And I think that's everything that we're going to need for this, right? If I think of anything else in the series, then I'll add it. But for right now, that's what we're going to look at. We're going to have four items in our interface. And um, let's get started with our doubly linked list, okay? All right, so uh, let's go ahead and start with the easy stuff, I guess. Let's go ahead and look at the append algorithm, okay? Now the append algorithm is going to require as input a head pointer, which I'll call H, and a tail pointer, which I'll call T. Okay, now that head pointer is always gonna be pointing at the first node in the list, right? That's going at the first node. Okay, tail pointer, gonna be going at the last node. Now, it is possible in certain situations, right, in a special case anyway, that you might have the head pointer and the tail pointer pointing at the same place, right? So, right, when, when would that happen? Well, when the list only has a single node inside of it, okay? All right, so uh, let's go ahead and examine the algorithm for this. First things first, we're gonna wanna see what's going on. We wanna make sure that our list is Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the append algorithm. 
Hand algorithm is going to take as inputs a head pointer, a tail pointer, and some value that we're going to want to put inside of the list. Okay. All right. So first things first, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create our new node. Okay. And then we're going to want to initialize it. Okay. So the nodes for a doubly linked list are going to have at least three members, right? So let's say that we were storing integers in this linked list, right? So we'd have to have an integer that stores that, and then we'd have to have two self-referencing nodes, or excuse me, pointers. We'll call um, one of those pointers brief and another one next, right? So the brief pointer always keeps track of the node that comes before um, the current node. And then the next pointer keeps track of the node that follows. So any node is going to have the memory address of a node that comes before it and the node that comes after it. Okay. So anyway, let's get back to create our new node, right? So now we have to uh, initialize it, right? So let's assign a value to the integer variable as part of the node. And then we'll set the prev pointer to null and the next pointer to null. Okay, so that'll give us a picture that looks something like this. Okay. All right, so once we've done that, let's go ahead and check to see if the list is empty. Right, so we can do that by either checking the head pointer or the tail pointer, because if the list is empty, either head or tail will be uh, null. Okay, but I'll just go ahead and check the head pointer. So if head is null, then all I need to do is I need to set head to n. Okay, but I also have to set tail to n. Okay. Because what I need to have happen is, is I need this situation right here. Right? So if I'm adding a new node to my list, right? If there's only one node going to be in that list, then the head pointer and the tail pointer both have to be pointed to the same place. So in this case, the head node is also the tail node. Okay. Otherwise, if the list is not empty, then I need to, since this is an append, we're not keeping track of order. This is an unordered, this is for an unordered list. Okay, which means that we're just gonna go ahead and put the new nodes at the very end of the list every single time. Now here's something that's really cool though. Um, an advantage over the append algorithm for a regular old link list. Since we have this tail pointer, we know exactly where the end of the list always is. Why? Because the tail pointer has the memory address of that last node. So we don't have to do any traversal. And since we don't have to do any traversal, what we have is, is we've got ourselves a constant time algorithm, right? It's not going to be big O of n in this time. In this case, it's going to be big O of one because we don't have to traverse an existing list to find the last node in the list. We already know where it's at. It's, where the memory address is stored in the tail pointer, right? So the tail pointer is pointing at that last node. Okay, so let's say that we had this situation and then we went ahead and we created our brand new node, right? We put some value in it. Okay. Then uh, if head equals null, well, that's false because head's now pointing at this node right here. we got one node in our list, but still it's not an empty list. So we kick down to the else part here. So what do we have to do? Well, all we have to do is all, we just have to say, all right, fine. Then we'll go ahead and set T next, right? Which is going to be this pointer right here to N. Okay. Just going to change where that guy's pointing at. Okay, and then we have to make sure that we update our tail pointer because now it's not pointing at the end of the at the end of the list anymore. So we have to say, um, well, I say that, but there's one step here that I'm forgetting, right? Because I need to make sure that this link right here gets updated too. 
So before I update the tail pointer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to update this pointer right here. Because then all I have to do is do something like this. n.prev set to tail. Okay, so when I do that, okay, my link gets updated to look like this, which is exactly what I want. Okay, now I can update that tail pointer. Okay, so set tail to tail next. Okay, and when I do that, then my picture changes to that, which is exactly what I want. Okay, so let's do, let's walk through the algorithm one more. Let's do one more node here. So call append, and we want to put a new value inside of our list. So what happens, first things first, we create a brand new node. Okay, and we set its next to null, we set its prev to null. Okay, then we would have put our value inside that node. Okay, now once that's all happened, we check to see if the head pointer is equal to null. It's, it's not, right, because the head pointer is pointing at this node right here. It's got the memory address of that node. So we skip this part and kick down to the else. So we set tail next to n. So we're going to update that pointer right there. Okay. We're going to update it to point to the new node. Okay. And then we set n prev to uh, tail. So we've got this picture right here. And then finally, last but not least, we update our tail pointer. just like that okay so i think that's everything we need to do uh, that we need to talk about is in regards to the append algorithm that's the logic of it let's go ahead and do some analysis here now if i was to go ahead and count all these operations what would i have in the worst case well i've got myself a new operator right here that's going to do one operation i've got myself an assignment operator that's two operations i got myself another assignment right there Got an assignment right there. Got an assignment right there. Okay, now, no matter what happens, if I choose, if, if, if we have an empty list, for example, there's going to be three operations. Okay, three operations right there. If I have a non-empty list, doesn't matter how long the list is, I'm going to have three operations right there. So either way, if it's an empty list, non-empty list, I add three more operations. And since there's no traversal to have to find the last node, right? So there's none of that. That means that the number of operations that I have to perform in order to do this append are not gonna vary based on the size of the link, or not gonna vary based on the size of the length of the, of the list. So the number of operations is gonna be constant, therefore, this algorithm is going to execute in constant time. Okay, great. So I think that's everything I wanted to talk about in this video. In the next video that we look at, or in the following videos, we'll take a look at the insert algorithm. We'll take a look at an algorithm for freeing the memory used up by the doubly linked list. We'll look at a way of searching the doubly linked list. And then we'll look at a way of inserting nodes into the doubly linked list that preserve order. The append algorithm, not going to do it. Okay. All right. Great. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, as usual, if you found this video useful, please uh, consider giving the thing a thumbs up. And, and if you thought that it was terrible, well, there's that thumbs down button too. Right. So that's an option as well. And if you're a student of mine, feel free to shoot me an email or stop by my office hours if you have any other questions. All right. Great. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.